Barrymore was only seven years old when she became a movie star in E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The Barrymores in the 30s and the 40s were the most prominent acting family in Hollywood. I know adults who've met you who say that, you know, you've never been eight. A club is no place for a child unless you're Drew Barrymore in the 80s. She started off a young, adorable star with promising talent and unfortunately succumbed to the Hollywood lifestyle. The Barrymores are an old Hollywood dynasty of powerful and lauded actors who apparently love to drink. If there's one thing we know about that trait, is that it runs in the family. Before she became the poster child of how not to raise a minor in the industry, she was just a child. She was born Drew Blythe Barrymore on February 22, 1975 in Culver City, California to John Drew Barrymore and Jade Barrymore. As an infant, she was already being taken on auditions by her mother. She appeared in a commercial for Puppy Choice Dog Food before her first birthday. She appeared in several more commercials throughout her childhood. Her big screen debut was 1980's Altered States at the age of five. And of course, this miracle of a family favorite sci-fi film made her an absolute star. E.T. was huge in 1982 and still remains one of Spielberg's most lauded and nostalgic fan favorites. I've been waiting all my life to meet you and I found you. <laughs> well, that's why I stayed on the show an extra seven years. Do you understand all of the, all of the jokes? Uh, some of them. You fit right in. <laughs> To promote the film, Little Drew took to the legendary late-night talk show Johnny Carson and continued to take the world by storm. She also became SNL's youngest host to date. All behold the power of a pint-sized icon. The bigger the fame, the more debaucherous the behavior. The fame and partying were a consistent tug of war for Drew caused by being catapulted into stardom so young, not being able to relate to her non-acting peers, then drinking to cope with the fact that she felt so isolated as a child. She couldn't live as a kid, so she became an adult. Too soon, too fast, too much the trifecta for both fame and addiction. Drew's father was a pretty absent father and her mother loved having her as a little friend to gallivant around town with. Nothing more, nothing less. No, not at Disneyland or any place appropriate for a child to play, let alone even be allowed into, but the nightclub, namely Studio 54. Yes, the nightclub that so famously popularized many a designer substance and a bad habit to match. Part of the problem sounds like that you grew up too soon. At first, I really didn't know the difference. I was like six years old, hanging out with a bunch of 25 year olds. Mm -hmm. I liked being around older people. I felt like I could relate to them better. Why? Just because they were more experienced. You know, I didn't want to go off and play Barbies. I wanted to go out to a club and dance. So you started drinking at nine? Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was eight, I had had two glasses of champagne. All my problem had seemed, you know, to disappear for that hour that I was out of it. Those same habits took over Barrymore's life when she had her first drink at the age of eight and became a full-blown alcoholic by nine, and by 12 developed a very serious substance addiction. She claims it was an industry party thing, as if the professional nature of such events explained something so unnatural in childhood behavior. At age 13, an argument erupted between Barrymore and her mother. Drew wanted her mom out of the house and began to get violent. She was out of control. She slashed her own wrist and was put into an institution for a year. The mother who didn't know how to guide her child in the first place lost control of her and lost a sense of control she never really had. Shocking. Drew details these experiences in her autobiography, Little Girl Lost, and later during a segment on her talk show. And I just got so out of control that no one knew what to do with me. They drove me here in the middle of the night and they walked me right through those two doors. And when you go through those two doors, you do not come out. Speaking of parental guidance, what of Barrymore's father? The other Drew Barrymore? Great dad. Yeah, he would ask me for money on birthdays and, you know, inappropriate times. And I just wrote him off like, you're not a father. 
I just learned you cannot emotionally invest in people who are not attainable. Maybe there was room for reconciliation in private. John Drew Barrymore passed away on November 29, 2004. John Drew Barrymore's father and Drew Barrymore's grandfather, also named John Barrymore, died in 1942 at the age of 60 from cirrhosis. His final words were allegedly, Die, I should say not, dear fellow. No Barrymore would allow such a conventional thing to happen to him. Those Barrymores are quick to pour and slow to cope with reality. Her behavior ruined her reputation as a young promising star from a legendary acting family named Barrymore. She was now an industry outcast nearly blacklisted before the age of 18. Her film roles were nearly non-existent during this tumultuous era of her career, if you can still refer to it as that. She was almost a nobody. She even scrubbed toilets at 16 and faced homelessness. It seems now her full-time job was surviving her own misguided youth instead of stepping into a character that was not her. She herself had already become a character in Hollywood. A tragic one at that. An industry example and that industry turned its back on something it had to hand in creating in both fame and infamy. Heading into the 90s, that famous wild character she played actually made it back into the big screen in roles that basically mimicked her own real life behavior. There's typecasting, then there's this. She was playing herself more often than not, but also playing her way back into the hearts of filmgoers around the world. By the mid-90s, the age of Barrymore the boozed up behemoth were nearly over and the era of Barrymore the box office beauty had began. She was back in Hollywood's good graces no less than she was as a child snagging roles like boys on the side. But in true Barrymore fashion, this new career renaissance was not without its controversy and outlandish behavior. She posed nude for spreads in Playboy and Interview Magazine. She also danced on David Letterman's desk and flashed him. She was never very shy just a little lispy in the voice. 1996 would set the Barrymore box office trail ablaze in a way that changed and defined a whole generation of pop culture and horror no less than she did in 1982 with E.T. and sci-fi. Enter Scream, a platinum blonde bob with bangs, a series of disturbing phone calls, Drew Barrymore, Wes Craven, and plenty of fake blood, a recipe for box office success. She was one of the original Scream Queens of the 90s and helped set a trend in horror that rivaled the success of the highly celebrated slasher films a decade prior. She found her place as a romantic comedy lead in films like The Wedding Singer, Ever After, and Never Been Kissed, which is where she made her debut as an executive producer and cemented her likability as a dependable and comforting presence in theaters around the world. The new millennium would see her starring alongside Lucy Liu and Cameron Diaz in the campy and action-packed Charlie's Angels. Barrymore's role in Donnie Darko was a more dramatic shift and balanced her artistry as a do-it-all actress. However, it was Confessions of a Dangerous Mind that fully shifted her from rom-com and sometimes serious actress to a bona fide dramatic talent. So now she's here. She's back, one of the few child stars who flew off the deep end and made their way back into the public's good graces and maintained sobriety, a rarity in Hollywood. Barrymore today is more known for her legacy as an actress and by far being the most popular performer of any generation of the Barrymore dynasty. She plans to tell her two daughters exactly how she was at their ages and why she would never let that be reduplicated in their lives as alcohol addiction clearly runs in the family. But coming to grips with her past is more than coping with her Barrymore genes and being predisposed to addictive behavior. She also has recently reconciled with her mother, who she now realizes only did what was best for her after she did what was worst. Years of estrangement and venturing into motherhood has made Barrymore a lot wiser and more understanding of the mistakes of her parents. If there is ever an example in Hollywood of what not to do and how to come back, it's Drew Barrymore. Subscribe to join the U Universe. We proudly welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Miss Drew Barrymore.